pray as vessels, hopefully we want to release an anointing that will destroy the yokes and the fetters that people have come in here with. Now, if you are a human being, you probably walked out here last Sunday and you begin to live life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And most of us are not premier in our biblical, um, our biblical exercises. We don't get up and pray two hours a day or sometimes two minutes a day. And so by the time we get in here on Sunday, man, we're burdened and yoked and we can't even focus right now because of, oh God, how am I going to pay that bill tomorrow? Well, tomorrow hadn't come yet. So you may not live to pay that bill. Come on, y'all. You might be in heaven. The bill will be paid. So uh, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a overwhelming society which yokes us. We don't even know we're burdened. We won't even know we're worrying and overthinking and creating problems that never will exist. We don't know that we're creating a, an inner weight and self and bo bonding ourselves down to these things. So the Holy Spirit comes to destroy, but never the child, often to destroy the patterns and the behaviors and the mindsets of the child. So the Holy Spirit longs to destroy some things in our life. If God says to you, get it out of your life, it's got to go. There's no way around it. What is it to be delivered and not allow God to destroy what's destroying you and you'll never be developed? I'm going to talk to you about deliverance, destruction, development. I'm going to wrap it up in a capsule of spiritual maturity and maturity. So God longs to deliver us. I've been set free. No way to heaven but by the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Whether I feel saved or not, I'm not saved by feelings. I'm saved by faith and I know that I'm saved and I don't have a desire to be unsaved. Do we make unsaved decisions? Do we do stupid things as humans? Of course we do, but we're saved by grace. We don't put our boots on and walk our way up the works hill and say, I did it. No, we allow Jesus to completely deliver us. But the goal of the Holy Spirit is not just to deliver the child, but it's to completely deliver the child from their old nature. You don't get the degree and then say I did it and then you die one day never have developed your spirituality in Christ so he wants to deliver us secondly the anointing comes to pamper us let's read it again the anointing comes to pacify us the anointing comes to give you pity because you're 46 and still live with your mama come on y'all don't need a job because that ain't spiritual. I'm just, I'm just here to float through. No. The anointing comes to destroy the yokes from off our neck. Known yokes or unknown burdens. We may not even be aware of it. So the anointing comes to destroy what is destroying me. God doesn't hate me, but He hates the things that are killing me. God doesn't hate uh, my, the child. He hates the patterns he sees. So notice how the potter doesn't just say, you know, in anger, I'm going to take this mud and I'm going to throw it down because it's worthless. God doesn't do that. But God says, I'm going to stop the wheel. How many ever had God knock the wheels of your bus off to let you stop long enough to see how much help you really did need? Sometimes it, you end up flat of your back till you find the source. Amen? He removes the resource to show you these source. Amen. So he takes the mud and he stops the wheel. Are you with me today? He stops the wheel and he says, okay, I see a pattern developing here in this man, in this woman, a behavioral pattern that's going to cost them. Oftentimes, it's through the school of consequence. School colors are black and blue and the tuition is too much for you to pay. Often it costs you three marriages. Often it costs you $40,000 when simply the Holy Spirit said, now had you done it my way, this would be what the vessel looks like, but you did it your way. So he stops the wheel from turning. Are you with me today? And he says, says, I'm going to get some water, some moisture. And he turns his fingers and he shapes and he molds because the father, the potter, has great affection for this vessel. Ooh, he knows this vessel. He knows the cracks that you cannot see. He knows once he puts this vessel in the oven, it's not going to hold up. He knows that he's got to bend the vessel here. As a matter of fact, I did a study one time on the potter and the clay. And the more flexibility the mud has, the stronger it will be 
see at the finished product. If it refuses to cooperate with the hands of the master, it will be a bastard vessel, unsubmitted, won't repent, don't tell me what to do. And the moment God tries to direct it, it will interpret that as correction and run. God will be trying to bless that vessel, you and I. But the vessel, oh, oh, excuse me, back up here, buddy. The first response of an uncooperative vessel is to break, to draw sympathy. Oh, well, I'm just not good enough. Nobody loves me. Can't find a church where they appreciate me. If you've been to 10 in six months, it ain't you. The church is you. You got to cooperate. So the mud that will not cooperate cannot be the vessel fit for the master's use. Say amen. So he longs to destroy. You know what he has to destroy out of the mud? Air pockets. Woo! Got to get all the air out of it. Got to get it flowing right. Notice he does not destroy the mud. He says, I'm going to stop. I see where you are marred. God is love. Love is God. He that knows God must walk in love. And love don't have the limits we have. Bless God, and we get tired enough, or I've had enough, fed up, as we say. We're done with people. But God will spin that wheel around. Somebody say amen. He'll put some water from the Holy Spirit, some water from this Word, and He will bring out a vessel that will blow your mind. I want to tell you, if you're in a marriage right now that the partner has given up, don't you give up. God can step in and make a way, keep the switch of faith turned on. Come on, y'all. Don't just walk out and give up. Don't don't give up to the devil. Surrender to God. He longs to deliver us, to destroy what is destroying us. Let me say it again. If God's told you to get it out, get it out. If God's given you an assignment to destroy something, let it go, turn it loose, and you won't have regrets. You have. There, the bottom line is if you're going to be whole, you got to put a bullet in some things. Let me say it like this. There are some places you'll never go in God. Now, you'll go to heaven, but there's some blessings and, and um, help me, Lord, there's some avenues of faith you'll never get to until you put a knife to the throat of the things God has told you to get out. It's difficult to say, God, bless me with an Isaac if you're sleeping with an Ishmael. It's difficult to say, God, give me and bless the desires of my heart if you won't give God every room of that heart. So the desires of my heart are not my selfish desires. They're the desires God has given me. That's the desires of my heart. How many of you want God to bless you and keep you and make your way prosperous? Hey, the way, of a, the way of a transgressor is what's hard. I don't want the hard way. I want God to bless my way. It's going to be hard enough. Lead me not into temptation. You know why we pray that? Because you're going to find it on your own. You can say, God, lead me not into temptation. No problem, because you're going to find it already. You don't have to hunt a devil. They might be sitting by you. You don't have to dial a demon. They're all around us in life. You work with people that if you were lost, you'd have done killed. But you're saved. Come on, y'all. Let them live. Give me an amen right there. Say this word with me. Deliverance. Destroy. And lastly, God wants to develop us. This is where we fall into deep love with Christ. It's the blue flame love. Not the six weeks we've been dating and we're 16 and a half and we're going to get married with a premarital marriage because we in love. Come on, y'all. Staying up all night on a cell phone you don't buy. Squealing tires you don't pay for because you're 17 now. You in funky love. I'm in deep love. You in lust, not love. Come on, y'all. But love is not a red flame. It's a blue flame. Love, the love of Christ, is when He develops us. I'm going to show you how He develops in just a second. But it's when we enter the deep portions with Christ. It's when we love Jesus, not based on how we feel, but when we get a pleasure from seeing the process of grace in our life. Man, I get giddy. I get ecstatic when I look in the mirror and I can see changes that God's done in my life. You used to, you would have cussed them out. Now you're saying, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. It's not worth it. I'm going to preach right now. It's not worth 
getting bitter. Let it make you better. You know you're falling deeper in love with Jesus when you shout about stuff you used to have a barroom brawl over. When you worship in the middle of things that would have used to have taken your life literally to the brink. But it don't bother you like it used to bother you. Oh, offense. People getting on your nerves and things. You, you're growing, see? And the process of grace is when Jesus begins to develop you beyond those initial Goliaths. Are you seriously sitting here telling me, well, that just bothered me. Don't grow up, grow down. Then grow out. Let God get you through and over things that used to just attack you and tackle you. How do we develop in God? It's when we get out of a one night stand mentality. This church absolutely cannot survive on my Sunday morning sermons. It can't happen. You cannot live spiritually on any type of dynamic television preaching. It's good, praise God. But the will of God for us is to develop spiritually. Now here's the great thing. We don't have to examine and diagnose ourselves. We come and surrender to God as the mud and Jesus himself woo, begins to develop and mold us as he sees fit for the Father. If God sends you people that gets on your nerves, He's teaching you patience. Wave at this white kid today. If God sends you bills that are due, He's teaching you responsibility. Come on, y'all. If, God, if God's put a faith test in front of you and said tithe on 10%, and you almost wanted to cry or drink a Corona light in the process of it, trust God and see what He'll do. God spun the universe into orbit, keeps the sun away from the earth and the earth away from the sun. And if you're going to trust anybody's economy, trust the God who sprang this whole thing into existence and keeps it going. That don't take no faith. That's fact. My God, science don't rebuke God. Science proves God. But Jesus wants to develop the mud. Are you with me today? How do we get in a blue flame love with Jesus? You ready for this? You do it in faith when you don't find it in feelings. You quit measuring, listen, quit measuring God by your personal preference. We see not only Jesus as He is, but we see Jesus as we are. So if I'm not patient, He's not patient. That's not right. That's not accurate. So I'm going to share with you quickly. I'm going to take two pieces of bread, put it on meat, and give you two in one. Y'all ready? That's 20% of you. Three signs that the mud is spiritually developing. First of all, why even seek maturity at all? Well, you good looking stud, you, you handsome fella, you, you got a little bit of money in the bank, but you just married you a crazy girl. I mean, why even seek out a mature woman? I'm going to tell you, maturity matters. If you don't believe it, get in crisis with people and you'll see their maturity level. Get in a battle with people and brother, if they're talking with you about somebody, they'll talk to somebody about you. Get in a friction with somebody and you'll see where they are. You'll see where they stand, see? Three, why even mature at all? Listen, listen, listen. Why even say God mold, bend, shape, and form me. You ready? Because the older you get in the Lord, the devils will not get smaller, they'll get more aggressive. And in the last days, perilous times will come. That word perilous is low. Low, hard, arduous times. Come in a mountain with no shoes on. It's not going, men, hey big boys, got hair on you too. Big old brawny man, you out whoop a whole army. Listen up, big boy. It's not going to get any easier for you. It's going to get harder. So in order to live in a society that's going to get harder, where they're telling men, you are now a woman. Where they're telling women, you are now men. Where we, we there's no unity in anything. It's going to get harder for you to hold your family together. I didn't say impossible, but harder. So maturity is something you want to seek after. You ready? So that your vessel doesn't break when it's weighted with content. You don't want to get on under the bar with 10 pounds on the bar and as a man spiritually be like 
Get it off, get it off, get it off. You want to be able to lift the load God has placed you in. Can I get an amen? It's not going to get easier. You have to get this now. Now you don't have to mature today, but you want to begin to seek maturity. Hey fellas, I don't know what's wrong with this marriage. I I tell you, man, I, I do all I can. I do everything I can. Listen to me. There's some things that can fix your marriage. How do you know? I've been there. I've been married almost 15 years. We've had our moments of near divorce. We have. I know I look real good. But we've had some ugly moments. Where I had to develop. Ready? Come on. God had to develop the character within the person. This young man came to me, or a story, um, this, this story came to me of a young man who had gotten saved. And three of his buddies he used to drink with, they came up on the porch and said, Hey, Henry, we heard you just got saved. He said, Yes, sir, I sure did. Went down to the church Sunday night and gave my heart to the Lord. My life has changed. I'll never be the same. He said, I, 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 they said, you really think and believe yours? He said, well, I, I think I am. So one of them got behind him and went, pow! Henry stood up and he mopped the floor with all three of them. He cussed and he beat them. They bled. After he's finished, when they said, we thought you saved. He said, I thought I was too. (laughs) It's in the response of the mud. Watch this. It's in the response of the vessel that tells you what the vessel is. Darling, you look so wonderful today. Can I use you? Would you pat me on the back on camera? (laughs) Doing a great job today. Come on, give me some. Man, I get happy (laughs) when I giggle about what I used to choke on. Devil will send me a grasshopper. Oh, God. uh." Now I go, (laughs) that's all you got. That's what you sent me. I'm not into this one night stand Christianity. Can I even throw this out there? Modern Christianity in America. Oh, somebody. Come on. And you even see it sometimes even on the videos. It's almost like a, let's let's put all these ingredients in a bowl and it's going to be dynamic. I don't move God. You can have an innocent child that's got a crippling disease. If she puts her hands in the air, that'll move heaven. You got a 10-piece orchestra or one guy on a washboard singing kumbaya. That ain't going to move God either way. Singing off the screen, singing off a wall, singing out of a book. That never moved God because there's not a saved G chord and a lost C chord. What makes it right or wrong is what's said through the worship. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! The heart of it, see? Man. I'm seeking a blue flame love with Jesus. So when the devil comes behind me and slaps you on the back of the head, I say, I rebuke you. You're not going to get it out of me. You're not going to get a quit. You might as well go on. That's a blue flame love. Not this one night stand. Hit it and run. Hit, you know, get into Jesus. It's great. Disappear. See, let me say it again. We have to become a church, and we are, we will. Give me to the fall, where we're not just a Sunday morning. And we're not now. Don't get me wrong, but listen to me. Don't just live off the bread you get here. Take it home and nibble on it Monday to Saturday. God will give you grace that if Saturday you have to crawl back in this ER of called the Church of Jesus Christ, He'll give you grace to get here on Sunday to be refed, refilled, refueled, recharged. There's nothing wrong with being tired and weak and broke down physically. This is the house where God puts you back on your feet, restores you, extends your day. We don't have a class for people that just gets old and die. We got a class called Evergreen. Psalm 92, you shall be fat and flourishing even in your old age. 
Some of you live in that already. <laughs> Quickly. Three signs. I wrote this last night. Three signs. Not exclusive either. Not limited to these. There are more. Right? There are more. There's th hundreds probably. But three signs of spiritual maturity. I wrote these, number one, about myself. I wrote this one about me. First sign, this is the easy one, is not easily provoked. Whew. Has long patience with people. I like to see myself as a 90,000 chance guy. Can I get a witness? But if you get to 90,001, come on ladies, where are the claws at? Where are the crazies at? I'll preach to the crazy section for a minute here. I'm a million opportunity guy. But if you push me, come on somebody. How many can relate? In the, in the flesh, you don't have to look holy, in the flesh, but dear Lord, I, I'm developing my patience through God saying, ho, 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 ho. Because remember, God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. God could have said, boat, and there would have been an ark on Noah's front porch. But God allowed Noah and his team to build it. 120 years it took that ark to be constructed. 120 years! Why? Because God is long-suffering. A good sign of spiritual maturity does not explode on people. Now, well, let's flip that coin over. Be angry and... You're listening. Be angry and... Sin not. The Bible says it's okay to be angry. In fact, people who are spiritually immature try to fake it. Oh, nothing bothers me. Hallelujah. Really? The Bible says be. You ready? It doesn't say don't ever be angry. You ready? Be slow to anger. Swift to hear. And slow to run that mouth. Be slow to speak. Quick to hear. And slow to anger. That's good, isn't it? Pastor Eric, you should have preached a different sermon. Nope. I want to develop you. I want you to get something before you leave. Number one, and there, there's hundreds of these. These are just three God gave me quick. You have long patience. <laughs> have you ever wondered why older people, especially older men, kind of laugh at younger men when it comes to things they do. Oh boy, you'll learn. Because when you get kicked by the foot of that horse in the mouth, you'll find a different way. And that's called, you ready? That's called maturing. That's called growing. <clears throat> the second spiritual sign of maturity is a person who is spiritually growing will not fake that they're always spiritually strong. That's good. They know that they must surrender to Jesus to maintain their wholeness. In other words, they don't walk around like they're always spiritual and they always got to have it together. They don't fake being strong because they are overly aware that they are really weak. So when you see this, we've had it here, they, don't ever, they never stay, they never stay. Where they're amazingly spiritual. Really? They never last in God's kingdom. Because a sign of spiritual maturity is that you, you're, you're not always as strong as you feel. But wait, but wait, you're not as weak as you seem either. You're never as strong as you are, think you are. You're never as weak as you think you are. In fact, when you're weak, he's strong. 
And usually when you're strong, the Holy Spirit's weak in your life. I got it. I got, I, I got this, boys. Poom! I don't got this, boys. A sign of spiritually maturity is this. Simple, simple. They know how to surrender. They know who to surrender to. They know what battles to fight. And they know that a bulldog can whip a skunk and ain't worth the stink. They don't fight. A real guard dog won't bark at everything. Come on, y'all. They'll pick their battles. Number three, a sign of spiritual maturity is when you begin to love beyond what you feel internally. I married a couple one time, and I, I remember that, that message of the wedding. It's been years ago. I remember that message I wrote. I just don't feel it anymore. I, 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 I don't feel what I felt for him, her, anymore. When I met him, he did this. When I met her, she was my, my sweet thing. Now she's my sour thing. Oh, when I met him, he used to open the door for me. Now he, he, won't, even, he, won't, even, uh, he won't even sit by me. It loves beyond what the flesh feels. Listen to me. You ready for this? I just don't feel it anymore. Let me tell you where you got that from. The book of Hollywood. Not the book of God. Because there's going to be seasons when you feel your Jesus high and strong. And there's going to be seasons you sat for three Sundays in a row and you don't feel a thing. But if you want the harvest to come, the farmer sows, the farmer sleeps. The crop grows, then he reaps. You've got to make it through the night. But the church will help you make it through the night if you won't give up. And when you don't feel it, don't worry. Trust God. That's called faith. The harvest is in the ground. Whether you see it or feel it, only God can change people. you got to love beyond what you feel. Oh, that's a tough one. That's like saying eat this whole steak in one bite. That's tough, man. you got to love beyond what you feel. Why? Because we're an emotionally dominated culture. Pastor, I don't feel it. I don't, I don't sense it. Y'all, my wife abused me yesterday. We got home. I had drank a coffee from Starbucks that I never do. And I, I, I drank it rarely. And it was a sweet drink. It wasn't that big. I paid $6 for, for a half and half creamer, basically. Can I get a witness? Starbucks. I ain't a fan. And, and I drank the little drink there. And, and she said, hey, honey, when we get home, can I put you through our CrossFit workout? Boy, my Chest poked out. Come on, men, look alive here. I said, that's probably the, I do that with my, okay, darling, let's do it. I'm going to preach right now. And about 25 minutes later, I said, get behind me, devil. Pack your bags. If you don't, listen, if, if you don't feel the crunch against your feelings, you're not growing. Raise your hand if you've ever told somebody, you know what, I'm, I'm, I want to lose weight. Raise your hand if you've ever had a desire to lose one pound or a hundred. Look at me. And while you sat there eating that Big Mac, <laughs> I just don't feel like it today. Look at Pastor. You won't feel like it tomorrow either. Because this body is dying. It's going that way on you. Paul said, I beat my body into subjection. Hey, if you're a man and you're struggling with lust, sometimes you got, hold this mic, quit text and hold that mic. You got, you got, sometimes in life, fellas, you got to hold your thoughts captive. This lady comes up, she ain't wearing no clothes. All the women said, Amen. As a man, sometimes you got to put the horse guides on your eyes. You mean enforce myself? Yeah, take yourself prisoner. Come on, y'all. 
Put yourself in the chains of freedom. Woo! Set yourself free by saying, hang on, nope, not going there. Don't trust myself there. Keep your eyes here. Why? Because spiritual maturity means you don't trust your feelings and you love when you don't like. You love when you don't like. I don't feel this at all. But God, I love you. And I choose to love them. So as the mud's being shaped. Anybody get anything out of this? As the mud's being shaped, here's the worst mistake you can make. Oh, God just stuck a thumb in my ribs and my kidney. And you jump off the wheel. Oh, man. You ran out of the field an hour before the harvest bell. Come on, y'all. I grew up in a garden. Can I, can I get a witness? You don't plant on Monday and reap on Tuesday. But the, my worst nightmare was, anybody know what a foot tub is? Come on, y'all. When my grandma brought in a foot tub full of peas. I'm going to preach now. Black-eyed, purple hull, peas. We going to shell some peas. This is going to be fun, said nobody in their right mind. And nine bushels later, I remember when I was a kid, they used to put them on a scale. I brought mine. They said, they said you got a bushel? Yep, I got a bushel. Didn't have a bushel because they put them on the scale. Come on, y'all. They weighed my bushel. They said, nope, you half a bushel. Doggone, tried to lie, tried to lie, tried to lie, tried to lie. But you can't lie when they put you on the scale. And listen to pastor. Don't jump off the wheel before God's done with the vessel. Don't leave the harvest field before it's supper time. God will ring the bell. And you'll go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And grace will never be shortened in your life. God will give you grace to finish the race. You won't give up on the last lap. You won't quit. You'll make it in your marriage. You'll make it in your money. You'll make it in your career. If you'll stick with it long enough to let grace bring a perfect harvest out of an imperfect vessel. There's nothing perfect about us, but we serve an incorruptible God who can bring message out of mud, can bring ministry out of what is marred. And if you're broken today, you're in a blessed situation. Some vessels are so hardened, God has to crack them to heal them. The doctor looked at me and he said, I hate to tell you this. I don't want to tell you about Jude. He said, but I got to hurt him to heal him. If that's what it takes, Lord, close my eyes and give me grace. Three things that are signs of spiritual maturity. Number one. Not easily angered. Be a hundred thousand chance person. You see how quiet it is in this Presbyterian morgue today? Come on. Thank you, George. Look out. Look out. Look out. We love our Presbyterians. <laughs> Three signs. Not easily what? Angered. Are you a one and done person? I, that's it. Listen, your response is what God will send you. You know, the Lord spoke one time to me and He said, people don't see the thorn in their toe till they put weight on it, you see. But, but look at me. If, if you are struggling with what your weaknesses are, I can help you find them instantly. You ready? Criticize other people. I can help you find them instantly. Get to criticizing what everybody else does and God will show you your own thorn in your foot. Oh, well, I didn't see that. Get in a critical spirit and God will reveal to your own weaknesses. A friend of mine was a lifeguard. He said it's a low-paying job, but he said there were tons of girls. I said, well, okay, whatever. He said, but you know the worst person to rescue is a strong person who feels like they're stronger than the ocean. I said, Why? He said, they'll kill you because they won't stop what? Fighting. And they'll drown themselves. Come on. And they'll drown you. Let me give you a thought. You got to be weak enough for God to save. 
if you see yourself as, oh, I, I don't need any of this, you, you won't, you, God won't, He'll deliver you, but He'll never develop you. Let me throw this one on you. How many people that you know will use the title Christian that are delivered? They're go- Look at me. They're going to heaven, but they've never developed spiritually through the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to develop the mud. Number two, sign of spiritual maturity is they, they won't fake being strong. They, they, won't, they won't lie about their weaknesses. Hey, this is my struggles and I have to surrender. And they're, Listen, they won't put on a show. Did you hear what I just said? By the way, if you're here and you plan on being here, we're not here for a show. I'm not into that. I'm old enough to realize if it's cool and relevant, they'll buy it. But if it's real, you'll know it. Don't send us a whipped cream Jesus. Give us the real thing. Hey, an imposter's not coming back on a white horse. The real man himself is. Not the ghost of heaven, the king of heaven. The real Jesus died for my sin and my sickness so I can have real healing and atonement and spiritual recovery in this body. Say amen. You don't have to fake it. A sign of spiritual maturity, you ready? Is that you don't always seem, I got it. No, no you know how to surrender. And number three, you will love beyond what you feel. Love when you don't like. Not emotional driven Christianity. My one of my best friends, pastors of Baptist Church, they run about three thousand people on Easter. I preach there on Father's Day. You know what I notice about the Baptist people? <clears throat> they do not have a struggle to get people to volunteer. They have more than enough help. The church may not seem as alive as it normally would if it was, for example, a Pentecostal or charismatic or spirit-filled church. You still with me? But they don't struggle to convince people to pay tithes. Now let me flip that record. A lot of the people that do pay the tithes run the church. The bigger you pay, you still with me? The more, well, I bless God. Now watch, that's not quite biblical. That's not, it's, that's not quite biblical. Jesus, watch this, was what I preached a series one time called the servant king. He didn't look at the woman adultery and say, get up. Come on, y'all. Get on your feet, you winner. Or stay down there, you loser. He bent down. Help me preach, y'all. Took her by the hand. Made himself of no reputation. Took him on himself the form of a slave. Kenosis. Emptied himself out. Filled himself with the wrath of God. Sin and sickness in Pilate's hall. God did that to him. But in that, those organizations, or Methodist or Presbyterian or other, they, they don't struggle. Watch. To get people. Now we'll be having an, a church baptism. There'll be a line of people. Watch. But in your Pentecostal churches, wait, wait, wait. Until a church gets big and it's cool, you just about have to beg them. Watch. Because the focus is more Sunday morning. Woo! By Tuesday, they've lost it. Whereas at a church that I just explained, it's more of, Amen, and this is what we do to be a disciple, and turn with me to the book of John, and a few people are yawning, and some of them need a smoke break, and others are like, hey, this is kind of boring, because my phone's going off in my purse or my pants, and I got to go. But in a church like this, the danger becomes, watch, forgetting everything by Monday afternoon. Amen. Now I asked my friend, I said, why do you think, why do you think that's the case? And he pastors 3,000 people. Listen to this. And here's what he said. He said, well, he said, 
I've had this conversation before, and this is my theory. I think spirit-filled people base too much of what we do or don't do on feelings. We rely on passion as a constant necessity when it's not. Commitment is the necessity. Oh my God. Passion will come and go. So if it's left, if your marriage, there's no passion, it left the building, it'll come back. You just got to stay long enough and be developed and say, God, help me. Commitment is the necessity. Passion will come and it will go. Watch. Blue flame love. You have my word. I want to die with you. You have my word. Lord, I'm, I want to stay in your body of grace. I don't want to go back to the person I once was. Addicted, confused, suicidal, tormented, lost teenager that was near death's doorstep. I mean so close, somebody caught me one time about to take my life. I don't want that. I don't want that guy. I don't need that guy. I don't love that guy. Look at me. I hate that guy that once was me. And my prayer is, God, you've delivered me. Woo! Destroy any and everything in me that's trying to creep back in the vessel. Say amen. And now develop me to be the person you want me to be. And don't you think it's a one pop, one pill Sunday. It's no such thing. That's a lie. You have to apply what I've preached throughout that week. Pastor today preached on these three signs of spiritual maturity. He said these were not the only signs, but not easily provoked. Leave me alone! Ooh. Oh, man. You better not bother them. Head's too big and heart's too small. Pastor, I'm scared to talk to them. I think they'll blow up. Well, there's probably spiritual immaturity there. Now, by the way, if you're scared to talk to them because you've ran up their credit card bill <laughs> and you've driven them through hell and you're in rebellion, I'd be scared too. Amen? But there are signs of spiritual development. So this was my prayer this week. Lord, don't let us just be a Sunday morning church. Apply. Look at Pastor. Just give me one thing that you've got from today and you just apply it this week. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Remember last week? That one's easy. Wave that towel. Don't throw that towel in. Serve with it or wave it in victory. That's easy. You know why? Because everybody's twirling. Everybody's dancing. Everybody's jiving. But don't give up on your marriage, your home, your family, your church. It's because you don't feel like it. And by the way, don't, don't run out where you... It's just more comfortable over there. Okay. Well, be careful. You don't, you don't trade comfort for conviction. Because you're not growing when you're comfortable. You're growing when God's pruning you on and pushing you. Now, should you be comforted while God's pruning? Yes, because He's there. His presence is there. But how many of you like me have ever had God tell you, be quiet? And, well, Lord... I, Excuse me, Abba? The same Jesus that loves me is the same Jesus that leads me. He will lead me. He will say, shh, no more. Stop. True story. We were going through something one time with a situation with a couple years ago. And we were in the bathroom. I don't know if we were just, just sitting in there, I think, in the old house. And... I, I looked at her and I said, Lindsay, I said, the Lord just spoke to me. She said, what did he say? I said, we are absolutely not to discuss this situation another second. Remember that? And the Lord said, if you don't get it out of your mouth, you'll never get it out of your heart. If you don't stop running it at circles like a gerbil on a wheel with your mouth, it'll never come out of your heart. Look at me. You're only as sick as the secrets you're keeping. Admit it 
and quit it, confess it, forsake it, and walk on. Woo! You just say, Lord, forgive me, remove it out of my heart and my mouth, and I make a commitment, not a passion, a commitment that I'm done with this situation. I surrender it to you. Now I walk on in Jesus' name. Admit it and quit it, whether it's sin or whatever it may be. Admit it and quit it, confess it, forsake it, and walk on. And from that day forward, we had freedom over that situation, did we not? Because we didn't talk about how wrong we were done over and over. Can I get any witnesses to that? We didn't keep rehearsing the offense and the, can you believe in, man, I even told I said, man, I just want to knock at God. I just want to lied to, manipulated, controlled, had enough. This has been eight years ago, so quit thinking you know who it is. Lord have mercy. We're done. But it got out of our heart, didn't it, honey? It got out of our house. It got out of our mouth. And we didn't bother with it. Now we're, we're friends, love them, see people. Praise God, good to see you, man. And I don't see them and go, nah. That's how you know you've been set free. When you see them and you go, hey, I, I, I don't like you, but I love you. And listen, if they've done you wrong, you ain't got to let them move back in. You ain't got to take them and let them babysit your kid if they've done something crazy in your life. But listen, you, do, you can release them. You can release and say, hey, I can't control this anymore. Actually, when you think you are in control, you're being controlled. Whatever you fail to submit to owns you. Submit to God and He'll take ownership. Amen? Stand on your feet with me. Praise the Lord. Anybody get anything out of this? Yeah. Glory to God. Lift your hands with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I, I'm, I'm sure, Lord, there has to be people here that have come in here perhaps broken or just feeling the blues of this week or perhaps exhausted from life and just overwhelmed, Lord. But you are a God of restoration. You long to put the pieces of the clay back together again. You will take the damage of our life and use it to develop us. So Lord, I call forth even now, I call forth even now people in this room that will just decide I want to respond to this message, Pastor Eric. I, will, I want God to restore any broken areas of the vessel in my life. And I feel like this was a message God gave you for me. Come on, if that's you, just wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. Wow, wow, praise God. God can take years. Whew. And He can give them back to you. I'm going to release you in a moment to this altar, but i got something I want to say to you. Look at me. Look at me. Some of us, you know, the devil, he tries to convince us of this. He tries to say, well, you go up there, that's your life. You, you, can't, you can't live. You ain't, you ain't really living. Look at me today. You have not lived until you live with the yokes and the chains and the burdens broken off of you. You hadn't had good night's rest until you leave a true spirit-filled service. Come on, y'all. Where you leave going, I don't really know what just happened. You have not lived until the peace of God has overflowed in your heart like a bubbling geyser in a desert. You have not lived till you feel the joy of knowing if when you press head to pillow tonight, you're not going to hell. You have not lived until you're facing a mountain, a Goliath. Chris, a, Goli a mountain in front of you. And, 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 and you don't know the result, perhaps, but you haven't lived till you're looking at it going, the God that is with me is greater than the gods that are in front of me. You haven't lived, my friend, as a man or woman until you are free from the opinions of human people. You haven't lived. But the grace of God can put the mud back on the wheel today. Pastor Eric, I feel like this was a message sent 
from heaven for me. I want you to come on, join me up here all over this room. Come on, should be hundreds of you. Come on. I feel like God sent this word for me. Come on. Whether you're newer or new or you've been here a hundred years. Come on, I'm going to pray with you real quick. Woo, hallelujah. Come on. If you want God to develop that mud, it's going to take time, isn't it? It's going to take time. He's still working on me. You remember that song? To make me what? What I ought to be. He's still working on me. Lift your hands with me. Father, these are those that are strong enough to confess. Help me, Jesus, today. I want a blue flame love and a relationship with you, Jesus Christ, that is not based or bent on circumstances that I know that valleys, troubles, and trials will come. But I'm not, I'm not allowing myself to be absorbed in the circumstances of this life. Hallelujah. I'm not allowing myself to be absorbed in the emotions of this life. Um... Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Look at me a second. Um, how many of you, like me, you will feel this great emotional um, lock in your life? It's like it. It's like you, you are. It's like you are subject, and and you are in prison to feel a certain way. Well, I. You don't get it. I just hate them. And it's like there's no change to that. Like I can't change that, you know. Or, or, or an overwhelming emotion that you're just locked to. Has that ever hit anybody? I'm just mad about it. I'm just, I'm hurt. Watch, watch. I'm hurt. I'm bruised. I'm, I'm broken. Look at me. First of all, that's a part of this life, isn't it? That's a part of this life. How many of you have ever wrecked a car? Been in a wreck? Raise your hand. Did you buy another car? Yeah. How many of you ever, you've been so busy you skipped lunch? Did you quit eating? No, you ate double at supper. Turn that down a little bit, please. Look at me. You don't quit on the most, on the, on the butter and the bread of your own table because you missed it at lunch. You come right back to it at supper. Don't you quit on God, watch, based on something other people who were figures of the Lord did to you. Did you know about 20% of this church or more has been brutalized by preachers? Preachers. Well, that really let me down. Well, hang on a second. There's, there's two roads we can crash on either side of the street. Don't put your faith in them. God sends flawed vessels that mess up all the time. Amen. Put your faith in Him. Anyone else want to join us before we pray together? Pastor Eric, I, I don't want to jump off the wheel. I don't want to jump off the wheel. I, it could be tomorrow. God gives me my miracle. I'm fixing to quit. Don't quit. What kind of farmer cries the day before harvest? <laughs> it ain't coming. And it, yeah, it's coming. You know what a real farmer will do? He'll laugh at you. That corn looks dead. You know what that farmer knows? It's going to rain. And the corn that's laid over, come on, is going to stand up. The farmer knows it's going to rain. And the sun's going to come out. Now look at me. There's something that the farmer can't do. He can't make it grow. He can plant it. Watch. God will put the sun in the air and the rain to fall. He, can't, he, can't, he can say, grow! Won't do anything. God has set him up an economy called, you ready? Soil. And he'll use it to his advantage. Amen? Don't quit. I see great things for y'all. If you won't give up, if you'll draw near to each other. Raise your family. There's, there's greatness in you, Greg. 
There is absolute greatness. You're going from boyhood to manhood, brother. God's turning you into a man after his own heart. It's a little bit like losing some friends and, oh, that's, man, that's tough and I don't want God. But you're almost at that point where you don't care anymore. Because you've tried this and you've tried that. Man, I've tasted the world. I, I'm still broken, miserable. We've all been there. And I see God just reeling you into the potter's house, His will. And as He shapes you, man, I see great things coming for you in your life. I feel like the Lord whispered to me, once I get Him totally in love with me, <laughs> man... And that's why the devil's fought you with all hell. Because you're, you're, you're this close and saying, man, I'm, I'm, I'm running after a God that I, I, can, I can't see. I can only feel occasionally. I, I don't know how to do this. I'm working myself to death. I feel like God sent you to encourage you, man. You're so close. Keep that love switch turned on in Jesus' name. I just see a great development coming in your life. Even this year before Christmas, God's going to take you from grace stage to stage. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because he, the Lord says, uh, because you are one of them that will fight until you die. You, you will not quit. There's two men in a boat. One's fishing for fu fighting for fun. One's fighting for his life. For the very bread, the very home, the very children God's given you. You're a fighter. Don't give up, brother. Surrender to Him. The fight will become easier. The blessings more numerous. Father, I pray over Greg today. If nobody will receive, I, I'm, I'm receiving with him, God. That you're destroying what has been killing his life. You're delivering him what has hindered him. And you are developing the man that is Greg Bader. You're developing this vessel to something that the Father looks at and says, That is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Through weaknesses and, and, and uh, imperfections, God is going to give you more grace. Oh, where sin abounds, the grace of God does abound much more. In Jesus' name, I see great, great things. Danielle, keep on praying for your marriage, says the Lord. Keep on praying for Jamel that God will do a good work and that He'll be with you in the house and not draw back. And you got a good marriage, but God says, keep praying about it. Keep believing. And don't stop believing what God has showed you that you're going to do. If God has showed you you're going to have full strength, keep believing it. Keep Trust the image God has given you of where He's taking you and your family. Have faith in Jesus' name. Tell me your name one more time. Michelle, we're so glad you came. Two weeks, right? Yeah, well, almost. This is David's daughter, y'all. Can I pray with you real quick? Yeah, Father, I thank you for Michelle. I believe that you have planted seeds in the ground and the soil of her heart the last two weeks and that you sent her. Maybe we'll never know the reasons, but in her journey of this faith, I'm asking you, Lord, to lead, guide, and direct her. Thank you, Jesus, for the work you have done and are doing in Michelle's life. I know, God, you're going to bring it to pure, total perfection, this vessel, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for Deal today. Whatever she's here for, whatever she needs, develop this vessel to be a pure work in Jesus' name. Let's all lift our hands as we close. Pray this prayer with me, Lord. You've delivered me. You're destroying my enemies and you're developing my character in Jesus' name. I seek maturity in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Miss Janet, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Stretch hands toward that great woman right there. Pray this prayer, Lord. Give her strength for the battle. Rest. Peace and wholeness to this precious woman. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's make our declaration. Listen, if you want to talk or fellowship after service, I'll be right back there. I'd love to hug your neck and talk with you. Pastor Matt will be back there. If you need to sign up for membership or baptism, please do that. Or any other ministry you want to know about, David and Matt will be back there. So make our declaration. Say, I'm whole. 
I'm healed, and I am prosperous. Amen. Go with God. He'll go with you. Love on somebody. If you can't love on them, give them a $20 bill.